Hello YouTube, Wes here for Beer Geek Photography. I'm sorry this channel has been kind of quiet this summer. I've just been really busy with work and stuff and just haven't had the chance to make the videos I want. The heat is really hot here in Florida. It's really difficult for me to get out and make videos, but that's gonna change soon. I'm looking forward to uh, some things I have planned, things I have in the works for some videos for this channel. Uh, so hope you're looking forward to that. So today I wanted to talk about a topic I keep seeing come up and I think it's just totally wrong. It's a topic having to do with film and there was a video made about this topic uh, by Vox, I believe, uh, made a video on this topic. Uh, Petapixel actually picked this up and talked about it. And it's the, it's the idea that film was some, somehow tuned to be, to not render darker skin tones properly. And that's just entirely false in my opinion. If you have an understanding of film and exposure and how this all works and how photography works, you realize that it has nothing to do with the film itself or how it was formulated. It's just a factor of the range of tones that we're trying to capture in photography. Uh, Ansel Adams made very popular the, the what he called the zone system, which was a, 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 a range of, of light between pure black and pure white, 10 zones of, of change between, between pure black and pure white. And each, each zone represents a stop on the exposure system in cameras. Pure black and pure white are 10 stops apart. When we're talking about film, film is a chemical process. It, there has to be light hitting this film that makes a reaction happen that causes these chemicals to have certain properties so that when it's developed, the, the dyes and, and whatnot that are in this film stay, stay behind where they need to stay behind and are washed away when they need to be washed away. And it takes a certain amount of light for that process to happen. And that's how we get determined proper exposure is for the right amount of light to be hitting the film to make that process happen. You're really only gonna get perfect exposure for one sort of small zone, small range, you know, one, one part of that zone system. And as you get further away from that perfect exposure, there's gonna be less and less chemical reaction happening on this film or more and more chemical reaction happening on this film that's causing too much of the dyes to be washed away uh, where, you're, where you're losing detail and you're losing color and you're losing contrast. So when you're talking about photographing people uh, with different skin tones, they could be, you know, they could be a stop apart in, in lightness, they could be two stops apart in lightness, and as you're getting further and further away from each other, balancing those two different skin tones becomes more and more difficult. So when we're talking about, you know, traditional sort of consumer level photography where, you know, you're, you have a camera that's making an automatic exposure or, you know, you're using a light meter and you're just t you're doing what the light meter is telling you as far as the exposure. It's sort of just trying to balance everything out as best it can. There's not really much latitude there when we're talking about film particularly. Uh, digital is a lot better in this aspect. Film, as you, as particularly if you're exposing and the exposure system bases it, its exposure on how much light is in the scene, it might set the exposure for sort of lighter areas of the scene and then the darker areas are not gonna get exposed well. So you're gonna have people with darker skin or darker areas of the scene, there's not gonna be any detail at all. Uh, as I said, digital sensors are a little bit better in this aspect where the amount of the ability of the software either inside your camera, the, the, the image processing software inside your camera or using software afterwards like Lightroom or Photoshop, uh, you're really able to sort of bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights and balance the exposure much, much more much better than you were ever able to do with film. So, you know, only the professional, really professional film uh, shooters were able to balance those exposures in that sort of way where they were able to sort of bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights. And even then, film is, is a, as I said, it's a chemical process. It either, it either happens or it happens too much and you're losing detail. And if it doesn't happen, if there's not a correct exposure for a darker skin tone, then it, there's not gonna be anything there. If a photographer was just shooting based on what the light meter was saying, 
uh, they might lose those darker areas. People with darker skin tones might not have much detail. Uh, maybe better photographers had the ability to sort of overexpose to sort of capture those darker areas and then in processing when they're in the light in the dark room they were able to sort of bring down the highlights and do some some of the things we are able to do nowadays in the digital world with as I said Photoshop and Lightroom uh, they were able to do some of that sort of now uh, there's this old saying that goes expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights so that's what you're doing is you're exposing you're overexposing the film a little bit to capture all the shadows and then you're when you're developing you're you're developing to sort of bring down the highlights a bit and keep those highlights from overexposing too much. There's a little bit of latitude you have there in film, but not as much as we have now in, in the digital world. So yeah, it's, it's really wrong to say that film was somehow tuned for, tuned for lighter skin or film was somehow uh, developed to be, to be racist or to, developed to be uh, against people with a darker skin color. It's really just a, a matter of physics and chemistry and a limitation of the media that really caused that and a limitation of the photographer in question. I'm certain there was photographers who spent hours and hours in the dark room balancing out skin tones of people of different colored skin tones and they are to be acknowledged for that. There's a, there was a lot of work that went into that. It was very, very difficult. It took hours and hours and many trial and error and uh, a lot of it was a lot of lot more work than it is nowadays in the digital world to do that. But really, film is not film was not developed to capture a certain skin tone better. There's nothing to that really that I think uh, I'm, I'm calling BS on that one. It's just a matter of, as I said, physics and chemistry and a limitation to the medium. It's very limited medium and it was the, being able to work within that medium was uh, only available to somebody who had time in a dark room to be able to spend the time to work on those images and really uh, get the most out of the medium. You, know, you have a very limited range to work with. So that's, that's my opinion on the subject. I really am disappointed at uh, that this video was made in the first place. I'm disappointed that Petapixel picked it up. I hear people saying this in the photography world and it seems like there's a lack of understanding of film and a lack of understanding of why, why this took place and that it's more of an issue with maybe the photographers themselves who really got the exposure wrong or didn't have the ability to to balance out the exposure better, you know, being able to control control the exposure in the camera and control the exposure in the dark room. Uh, that's more a limitation of that rather than the film itself and how it was formulated. The, the film manufacturers were trying to formulate this film to capture as much detail and as much light as possible. They did their best. They were trying to limit the amount of grain in the film. Um, you know, the higher the speed film, the more grain you would have because the bigger the, the chunks of of chemicals and iron and, and metals and stuff that are in there that create the image. This is more of a, a limitation of the, the medium than, than a limitation of the film itself uh, or how it was formulated. It really was not formulated to work with a particular skin tone or anything like that. Uh, so that, those are my thoughts on the issue. That's my best way of trying to explain this. I'm hopefully able to add some graphics into this video to help explain it better. Um, uh, thank you for watching and welcome, welcome you all to the channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with some more videos real soon and have a great day, great night, and we'll see you again next time. Wes from Beer Geek Photography, signing out. Cheers.